All right, everybody come in and take a seat. If you uh, haven't donated to the hat, it's up here up front. Don't forget that everything you donate to the hat tonight goes to the band, and that's how they keep things going, pay for gas and hotels and go on down the road and write new songs that we can love to listen to. So um, basically uh, what I know that we got coming up on April 19th, we got Adam Carroll's going to do a ad or he's going to have a CD release party here. Uh, coming up, and uh, May 3rd, we got Susan Herndon and her Red Dirt bunch of guys coming to play again. Um, that's what I know of right now, and, and if other things change, uh, like us on Bottle Cap Barn on Facebook, and you can keep updated. So we're going to have a second set here. Anybody that uh, wants to hang out after they get done with their second set, we usually hang out and jam here, so anybody that brings their instruments and wants to play, we maybe we do that afterwards, so... All right, awesome. up on the stage here, we've got their second set, the uh, Mulligan Brothers. Thank you so much. This is going to be a fun set because we got to meet everybody. We're not strangers anymore. So. This song is called Lay Here, and uh, for me, this song, I've, I've often people say, hey, what's this song about, or what's that song about? And I usually say, well, what, what do you think it's about? And it's all a trick, because they'll tell me what they think it's about. I'm like, yeah, that's it, you know. And because I really like the whole idea of a song being able to, uh, you know, you, you write a song, and it's something very personal, or it's very, uh, it's about something very particular, but... If you go and you explain that to everybody, you know, what if that song is about, you know, penguins or, or something of the sort, and all of a sudden this song that means something to you doesn't really mean anything anymore. So, but for for me, this song is 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 about when you when you meet someone or you see someone even just across a room, and you can in just some split second that seems like years, kind of envision what your relationship or your your proxy with that person will be or could be even. Um, and it can be so overwhelming to imagine such a long span of time and then all of a sudden be slapped back in the face with this reality that you've still got to get the guts to walk up and talk to this person. Or, I mean, it's not even, it's not even happened yet. That's what this song's about. To me. <laughs> but, <laughs> it loosely uh, interpreted could be about penguins, for sure. <laughs> That's how I... That's how I took it. <laughs> church bell on a Friday night and I felt like a tragedy all dressed in dirty clothes when you walked out before I could say how when you start cleaning the world stop speaking I gotta let you know just how I Suit in his 
father's car. The next time was a Monday, and you came over to my house. We hardly talked about anything, but a demo got quiet to me. Kissed our first in the end, the clock kids took a free from the round the clock labor of their day to day. Cause when you start to Twenty minutes, we can play the "I Love You More" game. Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm relentless at that game. That's why I have long-lasting relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Love you more. Holding a 
called Mama Gets My Soul, but it has an alternate title, which was the working title before I settled on a name, and it was that song that my mom hates, because she hates this song. <laughs> but she swears it's for the right reason. She just hates it because it makes her sad. But uh, still, it's just not right to hate her songs. You're supposed to be biased. You're supposed to say always, like, yeah, it's the best thing I've ever heard. And put it on the refrigerator. <laughs> I, I thought it was about penguins. <laughs> Because of my mom's misinterpretation, you know, it's selfish of you to make this song about you. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs>
this one, but I suspect it was from a penguin's perspective. <laughs> makes the most sense.
open refuge, you retracing my steps. All the way to cast a day that took from you in the dead. They said you better live alive. There's always hope to hold the cold away. together because um, this is this was called too soon to say and I wrote this when I kind of sat on it for the longest time the only person I could find to like it was my dad and it, he says I'm wrong about that but I swear I'd play it and I'd kind of look out for a response and I'd wait for somebody to ask to hear it the next time I saw him and nothing ever but my dad my dad reliably was like play that one that you say everybody hates but they don't hate it and this one's called too soon to say this is, I should say, I, I kind of wrote this about several friends of mine that all needed a lot of advice and a lot of attention at the same time. I wish I could tell you this song was more about myself because I, it would make me seem much cooler. I would have more street cred. But I have to admit that it's not, it's not very much about me at all. And I couldn't sing it in front of my mom if it were more about me. <laughs> There's a girl in my bed, don't be fine. Love don't call. 
gonna call my dad as soon as this show is over and tell him. I should add to that story that uh, that was that was before before the band was playing that song, and they make all the difference on it is what it is. Speaking of which, this uh, lovely gentleman here is uh, Ben Leninger playing a suitcase bass. Thank you. He's whispering, fellas. That's a uh, yeah. start over here. Hey. Tell us secrets. This is Graham Ray on that fiddle and man. <laughs> he just started playing about two weeks ago. He learned off of YouTube. Yeah, man. It's amazing what you can pick up on there. Fairly quick. Fix my lawnmower and learn how to play the fiddle. This Italian stallion back here is Mr. Greg Luca. We're gonna let Mr. Greg sing you one. <laughs> 